Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids and this is my full review of the 15 inch MacBook Pro early 2011 model. Now, this isn't the product in my hand here but I mentioned these roto lights in a previous video and um, I wanted to just let you know that I'm going to be using one of the sort of warm colour uh, filters on this front light. I don't get to see a lot of daylight, I'm normally as white as this t-shirt because I sit inside the studio for most of the year um, but hopefully this adds a little bit of colour to my face. I'm going to set it off just to the right hand side so I wanted to just let you know about that before I started recording. You can see I've just switched it on there. So I'm just going to set this off to the right hand side and hopefully that will just introduce a little bit of colour to, uh, to the face. Let me know what you think. Anyway, on with the review. This is my 15 inch MacBook Pro. Now there are three models of the MacBook Pro available. There's a 13 inch version, a 15 inch version and a 17 inch version and they all come with varying degrees of processor speed, different hard drives, mainly the same configuration of memory. Um, they do, as well as the processor speeds, you do get different graphic card options as well. In the 13 inch version you get integrated graphics, uh, in the 15 inch version you get dual graphics with varying degrees of memory and then in the 17 inch again you get uh, a sort of much better graphics card configuration. Well this is the 15 inch version, let me just open it up for you and I've been using this for probably about two weeks now, something like that, about two, two and a half weeks and um, it is absolutely superb. I'm just going to put my uh, password in there. Now this is the 15 inch screen, so it's a 15 inch screen on, on this particular one, 2 gigahertz uh, Intel Core i7 processor. Now this is a quad core processor, so it runs at a very, very good speed. Now I went for the base model because uh, it was quicker. I didn't want to make any changes to it, um, so quicker delivery. Also, price-wise, I thought this represented fantastic value for money. Uh, rather than spending an extra two, three, four hundred pounds just for a little bit of gain in processor speed, I decided to stick with this sort of entry-level model in the 15-inch range. Also, I wanted to go with the 15 inch because I, I just wanted to go up to a bit bigger screen and a bit higher resolution than the 13 inch version offers. Now that 13 inch version I keep referring to has got a 1280 by 800 screen resolution. The 13 inch MacBook Air went up to 1440 by 900, which I think is really good. And I thought that when they uh, revised the MacBook Pros, they were gonna add that resolution to the 13 inch version, but they didn't. So, so this particular 15 inch one gives me that 1440 by 900 resolution, which I like a lot. You can opt for a higher res screen when you purchase this particular model. So you can go for a 1680 by 1050 resolution 15 inch screen. So, so that is possibly something you might wanna uh, go for. It does add on a bit of delivery time. Um, I did have a 15 inch uh, version before with that higher res screen and I liked it a lot, it was very very good but when I, whenever I'm going to be doing any sort of mainstream editing on here I'm going to connect it to an external display anyway. So I just wanted to talk you through the various connectivity ports on the left hand side of the MacBook Pro. Here we've got the MagSafe connector and it's here that you plug in your power supply for charging the battery or for running it from the power if you're perhaps working at a desk then we've got the Ethernet port, this is for used for connecting it to your home network. You can go for a wireless connection, but if you want to hardwire it, this supports up to gigabit speeds. The next one along is your Firewire 800 port. Again, great for fast connections to things like hard drives, etc. Then we've got the new Thunderbolt port, which also doubles as a display port as well. So you can connect uh, an external monitor to this port, or when the new Thunderbolt supported hard drives come out you'll be able to get really fast up to 10 gigabits per second transfer speeds from this port. Then we've got two USB 2 ports then we've got a memory card slot and this supports SD cards SDHC cards and SDXC cards and then we've got an audio in port and an audio out port as well. So really really good that they've introduced Thunderbolt to their laptop range and I think that Apple are going to do that with their desktop range as well. So the next iteration of the iMacs 
and the MacBook Pros and the Mac Mini, hopefully. Sorry, I said MacBook Pros then. The, the next iteration of their iMacs, Mac Pros and Mac Minis, I think they're going to introduce Thunderbolt 2 as well. So, what else is great about this? The speed. Absolutely amazing. Uh, I did some speed tests on, on this. You would have seen those videos already. Uh, this is close to the performance of my Mac Pro that sits underneath my desk and drives these two monitors that you can see here. Very, very close performance to that. So really please, big thumbs up on the actual processor speed of this particular MacBook Pro. It runs very cool and very quiet. Yes, when you're doing video editing or photo processing, you're going to hear those uh, fans ramp up in speed a little bit, but the actual coolness of the case, this does a fantastic job of dissipating heat, and uh, I just can't fault it at all. Very, very cool in operation. Uh, I love the 500 gigabyte hard drive. It's got a good capacity. The four gig of RAM you get a standard is enough, but I upgraded this in another video to eight gigabytes of RAM, and that improved, just, just the responsiveness of the system improved with that. Um, Price-wise, let's get on to price. People say you pay a lot for a Mac laptop. Well, you do, you pay a premium for good design, good hardware, and good software, and you're gonna pay 1,549 pounds for this particular model. Uh, and as I say, this is the entry-level 15-inch version. If you're in the US, it's going to cost you $1,799 plus tax. The UK price includes VAT, so £1,549. Uh, it's a lot of money to spend, but you get a lot of great features, a really nice backlit keyboard, a massive trackpad, multi-touch trackpad, which is a joy to use. You also get that super drive on the side where you can pop in DVDs and CDs to read and write discs so that's really cool you also get the HD eyesight camera at the top of the screen so that's great for uh, video conferencing things like Skype and FaceTime I use it with ScreenFlow to do all of my screen capture uh, sort of tutorials and reviews for you so it does a fantastic job at things like that it is just a lovely laptop to use I think Apple have done a really good job in this latest update a lot of people are going to say it's a lot of money to spend, but if you want good quality, I can highly recommend it. I'm really glad that I purchased this machine uh, and, and just can highly recommend it. This is the early 2011. I have to say early in case they update them again later in the year, but for now, the early 2011 15-inch MacBook Pro Intel Core i7 quad-core processor running at 2 gigahertz. Absolutely fantastic. Highly recommended. Thank you very much for watching. Please do come back soon and check out more videos on the Geek and Noise channel. This video review is sponsored by BMI Solutions, the largest reseller of document scanners within the UK with a price promise guarantee.